Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to A Place in the Sun digital event. And welcome to our session on uh, the Algarve and specifically a, a virtual tour of the Algarve. Uh, we've done previous sessions on the process of buying in Portugal, the legal side, mortgages, etc. Uh, so now we're going to help you hopefully find that perfect spot uh, in, in the Algarve where you want to buy your, your home or your, your second home or permanent home. Um, we're fortunate today we've got four uh, experts, specialists in Algarve, in prop Algarve property. They're all based over there. Um, and some of them specialize in certain areas. Some of them cover the whole of the Algarve, but they've given up their time this afternoon to come and talk to us and introduce us to all the key areas. Um, I'll let each of them introduce themselves um, quickly in a minute. Just a bit of uh, household rules. My name is Richard Way. I'm, I'm the, an in international property journalist and I'll be hosting uh, this session today. So I'll be uh, asking questions uh, and um, steering the session. If you have any questions throughout, please use the question and answer box on your Zoom desktop. Uh, I'll be able to read them and then I'll feed them to the appropriate panelist. Um, and then at the end as well, we can have questions throughout, but at the end um, is probably the best time. Uh, this session is being recorded. So if you want to go back and, and look at it again, you'll be able to uh, download it off the Place in the Sun digital website um, in a day or two. Uh, all the other Portugal seminars are there as well already. Um, and that's about it. So what I'll do, I'll just start, um, if each of you could just Give us a sentence or two about who you are, who you represent, uh, where you're based, how long you've been out there. Uh, and we'll start with Angela Worrell. Hi, Angela, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thank you. So, yeah, I'm a director at Ideal Homes. Uh, we cover the whole of the Algar. I'm based in Villamora. I've been over here nearly 15 years now. Uh, still don't speak Portuguese, but try my best. Um, so, yeah, that's us. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, and then moving around, Nuno. Hi, Nuno from Nerisa. Hi. Hi, good afternoon. My name's Nuno. Um, been in Portugal for 19 years now. Uh, I represent Nerisa Portugal Properties. I'm the owner of the company. We are based in Carveiro. Uh, it's pretty central, 65 kilometers away from Far Airport. And we work with all different types of properties. Great, thanks very much. Uh, and I detect, is that South African accent there? Hello, Nuno. Are you still Let's there? Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah, yeah, still, yeah, but it's catching out at the moment. I do apologize. Okay. Uh, Chris, Chris Good. Hi there. Hi. Uh, Hi. Good to see you. Um, yeah, my name is Chris Good. I've actually been now in the Algarve for just coming up to 20 years. Um, came over initially as a, uh, as a golf pro, um, but I've worked real estate for the last, say, 15 years. Um, the areas that sort of we'll be concentrating are the Golden Triangle, um, which sort of spans from Quinta de Lago, Valtelobo, Almansil, those areas. Great. Thanks very much. Uh, and then another Chris, Chris Garvey. Hi there, Chris. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. I've been in the Algarve now for some 50 years, and I, I own Chestons, Portugal, and I specialise in the Western Algarve. We work obviously with, with Chris Good and also an office up in the north in Porto, which is totally different, but also a beautiful city. Great. Thanks very much. OK, let's get straight into it. I'm going to bring up a map now uh, and then we're going to head over to the east, the eastern part of the Algarve. Uh, so east of Faro, uh, as far as the Spanish border. And Angela, would you like to just talk us through uh, the main places where where your British clients like to look at look at and buy a property. Um, start from start from the Spanish border and move back towards Faro um, and pick out the key resorts, really. Okay, uh, so starting there, we actually do sell uh, sell over the border in Isla Canela. So you get best of both worlds there. So you can get Spain on, and Portugal on your doorstep. And um, the main attraction there is that you get you can get frontline properties. Uh, which is hard to get over in Portugal, and they are, you can get from starting about 170 for actual frontline brand new properties. So it's great to, you know, for people who want to step out straight onto the beach, that's where, where to go. And then coming over there onto, into Portugal, 
Um, our main areas where our clients go is Cabanas, which is near Tavira, um, and around that area, all, all along that coastline there, um, is, is a, a lot of proper, proper um, popular areas, especially for families. Cabanas is a real nice little um, town. It's only small, but it does attract uh, people with children. So this here, then, yeah. prior to Cabana, yeah. yeah. Um, so then it's near Tavira. Tavira is a, a, a big town, so it's all year round as well. It's very Portuguese style kind of town. Um, so it's um, it's on the river. And the thing is, in, in the east, people, it's only really just getting fully discovered. Uh, people have always got off the plane and gone west. And now they're starting to go in a, and look at the east, which uh, is, is a lot more traditional. But you do get more f uh, for your money as well at the moment because. Uh, it's not as known, so it's not as popular. But it is changing, and um, we will see prices going up there. So, but it, you can get more for your money at the moment. So, I would say you can get a a property, a, a two bedroomed apartment in Cabanas near Beach for as little as one fifty, going up. So, the, there's there's good uh, pr uh, properties there at good prices. Um, we've also got the, the beaches um, are off the coast, so uh, a lot of the time you get a little boat over to the beaches and that runs all day taking you over there, so you get a long stretch of white beach then. So you're talking about these here, on this side yeah. here? Yeah, so in Cabanas it's actually, the, the town is actually on the, on the front, but you've got uh, water between you and the beach, um, which is, like I say, it's quite easy to get over. Um, as we go further uh, west, more to the nearest to the central to Oliau and that, you've got a lot of islands there. So you yeah. can get on a boat to Oliau and it takes you over to the islands. There's no cars, uh, no roads, a little bit, um, there's little like uh, restaurants right on the beach. And you just feel like you're in Caribbean. It's really lovely, surrounded by turquoise sea. Um, but I, I would say for properties as well, a lot of people will go inland a little bit from Tavira and around there for a, a nice uh, villa because you get more for your money if you're a little bit further inland than what you do when you're nearer the coast. So depending on what you want, if you want a holiday rental, obviously you need to be near the town and the coast. But if you're actually relocating, it is nice to, us to be in the countryside um, and be able to visit those towns. And um, what are we looking at price-wise in terms of a detached villa with a pool? Um, um, you're talking around uh, 400,000 going up, maybe 350, you might get something. Um, it is cheaper, you get more for your money, but it's not massively. Do you know what I mean? There's not a considerable uh, change in the in the prices. Um, yeah. but you're looking around around the 300,000 upwards, I would say, but more around 400,000 for a nice villa with a, with a pool. Okay, uh, and in terms of uh, reaching this part of the Algarve, you, fl you fly into Faro and then, yes. and then, what is it, 15, 20 minutes? What is the, the journey time between the airport and uh, and Cabanas, for example? Um, I would say it's about 45 minutes. Okay. Uh, it's probably about just an hour-ish to, to the Spanish border. Yeah. Uh, and I believe, aren't there a couple of golf resorts up here as well? Castro, Marim, and um, is it Monterey? Yeah, there's lots of, there's quite a few golf courses in the area. And over as well, also, as you go over the border into Spain, there's a lot there as well. Um, but yeah, the, it, it's um, all, I suppose all the Algarve really is, is good for golfing. And there's, uh, just outside Cabanas, as you <coughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's a big golf course there. Just outside Cabanas. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, and, and would you say this day-to-day -day living costs, eating out, having a drink, um, are you paying the same sort of prices as you will in the central Algarve? You said it's a bit more traditional. Um, yeah, you, you get more for your money in all ways. Like, so you will find um, it's not as expensive when you're on the coast and things like that, whereas uh, more of a holiday resort, more, more people that are there, you end up seeing that the prices do go up. But in the East, yeah, you're still getting a lot of your money. You can go out for a, for a lunch, eight euros, ease out with wine, um, starter, everything involved. So, um, yeah, it's, it's very reasonable. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so the, main, um, 
the main attractions are obviously more traditional if you want the more Portuguese way of life, cheaper property. Yeah, um, it's a bit flatter as well, so you, uh, it's easier as well for the people that are not so good on the legs. It's a, a yeah. flatter area. Okay, all right. Thanks very much. Um, okay, now moving further west to uh, an area I'm sure everyone is, is um, familiar with or at least have heard of, the Golden Triangle, um, one of the most desirable places to own a second home, not just in Portugal, but arguably anywhere in the world. Um, I know celebrities and all types of, of uh, people own there. So Chris, you were in the thick of it there. Um, yes, Richard, definitely. Um, just, just in case some of our audience haven't been to any of the main resorts, you've obviously got Val de Lava, Quinta, Villa yeah. Mora. Just tell us a bit about each of the differences um, between them. Um, and yeah, then, I mean, we probably span as sort of as, as far um, far west as a bit, we go a bit further than Villa Mora, but that'd be sort of our sort of our, our, our norm distance that we'd go out on the typical uh, on a typical week, if you like, and the properties that we've got. Um, Villa Mora. Um, then going down to um, Val de Lobo, Quinta de Lago. Um, obviously, Villa Mora, we focus a little bit more maybe on families um, with the attraction of the marina there and, and plenty of restaurants within walking distance of, of the properties. Um, um, Val de Lobo, you get a little bit of that as well, to be honest. It's, it's, a, it's a much smaller resort than, than Quinta de Lago. So typically within Val de Lobo, um, you have a, a, a main square um, with the restaurants, um, a clubhouse with a couple of golf courses, the Ocean and the Royal Course. Um, whereas Quinta de Lago, um, stunning as, as, as most people are, are aware, but um, it's a little bit more spread out. So um, your plots are bigger and your distances between the amenities are a little bit, uh, a bit further as well. And, and within Villa Mora, what, what are your, because golf is, a, is obviously the big, it's a big thing here. What are your golf options in Villa Mora? Is it six? Yeah, seven I mean, you, well, within within the sort of the, the areas I've just suggested or recommended, um, you've got around about eighteen different golf courses, believe it or not. Um, Villa Mora has five or six itself. Um, Price-wise, as well, um, depending on uh, on how many, how sort of whether it's a one-off game or whether you're coming over for a week to play. Um, Villa Mora Golf will generally be about about half the price um, that you'll typically play in um, Val de Lobo or Quinta. Yeah. So for, for groups of guys coming out looking to play a lot of golf, that's it's a good option. Uh, and um, in terms of property as well, is uh, to, to most of your clients, do they want to be on the golf course on the fairways, or are they quite happy being away? What's yeah, I think I think there's, a, there's sort of a big mix, really. Um, if, if you talk about prices again, um, you, your frontline sea views um, will will hold the premium prices, um, and then you fall back um, um, to the golf or, or or lake views as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, just to just to give you a, a sort of a guideline um, in relation to um, to villas. And this obviously is a very sort of a vague, vague, uh, vague idea. Um, villa Mora, um, a four-bedroom villa, you're probably looking around about the um, the two million euro mark. Um, then you go to Val de Lobo, and you're up to probably three and a half to four million. Um, and then for to, to be in main main sort of centre of um, Quinta Lago, not in one of the resorts within Quinta, but in the centre of Quinta Lago. Um, you're in around the five, six, seven mark. Right. Um, and some of these ones, I mean, I've walked along down here by the beach and I've seen these huge palatial places that sort of fall back from the beach a bit. And what are we talking around there? You're talking to tens of millions of euros or? Yeah, uh, ab absolutely. I mean, fr uh, frontline plots would be 10 um, alone. Um, some of the ones that you've perhaps seen down by the lake in Kinter, if, um, if you know where the lake is and the shack and those, um, those different restaurants down there, Casa de Lago. Um, yeah, some, some of them are quite extreme. They're up to sort of your 35, 40 million for, the, for those frontline villas. Uh, but within the resorts themselves, if, so in Val de Lobo, for example, you said there's a square 
I remember there's a few restaurants and, and a bar and that's open. That's not a, anyone can drive in within the sort of confines of the resort and use those facilities, can they? Is it? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, there are a couple of resorts within inside the resorts, which are gated communities, um, but typically they're, they're open and there's a large number of, um, of different restaurants. Um, you've got at the bottom of uh, Val de Lobo, you've got a place called Prasa, uh, which is a nice square, which you've got probably five or six different restaurants and plenty of entertainment for the kids down there as well, um, especially on the evening, um, face painting and um, fancy castles, that sort of thing, especially during the season. Yeah. Um, and, and all the, just run through the, the, the amenities there because they, it's, you know, it's not just golf, is it? They're in their leisure resorts. Oh, absolutely not. I mean, the one thing that stands out is restaurants around here. I mean, there's, there's, um, there's so many good restaurants. I mean, and also the nice thing is we talk about the sort of the, the prices, but you can you can go out and you can um, you can have you can have sort of a three course dinner here for for ten euros if you go to some of the nice Portuguese restaurants just slightly outside the resorts. Um, so yeah, I mean, and also if you go down down to the beach, um, you've got the famous one of the famous restaurants at the bottom of Quinta de Lago, which is called Gigi's, um, which is lovely. Um, and then if you work your way across there, you've got um, Julia's restaurant, um, which is down by Dunas Doradas, if, uh, if, you, uh, if you're aware of that area. Um, you've got Maria's um, restaurant also down in that area. Um, so, yeah, there's, 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 there's no shortage of, of restaurants and, um, and, and activities. Oh, if you come to the top of Kinterlug or the entrance of Kinterlug as well, um, you've got two, two nice shopping centres. Uh, yeah. One of them is where, where my office is based, it's actually where I am now, which is called Bougainvillea Plaza, um, which has a supermarket, a um, couple of nice restaurants, some, some small sort of boutique shops as well. Um, and then you go up into, um, in, into the main Kinter, Kinter Lago shopping centre, um, which again has um, some nice sort of bars, restaurants and some... Uh, um, and it's, it's, it's nice and safe as well, and it's secluded for the kids. So, yeah, it's, it's some nice areas. Um, and what about apartments? If you really want to be in this area, which is, you know, is, is the more yeah. expensive area, can, and what can you get apartments for? Maybe not right near the seafront, but a, well, you know, half an hour walk from the beach, perhaps. For, 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 uh, yes, I mean, for example, I mean, if you talk, if, even if you talk about Val de Lobo, and you want to go for maybe a, a two bed apartment, um, one that potentially you could put more value into as well by doing a little bit of work. Um, you could pick one of those up for around about the 300,000 mark. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, there's the, the other option is to actually go obviously a little bit further away from the coast and go to Almond's, up to Almond Sill, maybe a little bit above that Valcomoso, which then you'll create some, uh, some views as well. Um, yeah. And then the, the, the price is then your down to perhaps 250 for a, for a nice apartment um, or in Val um, for around about the 850,000 mark, you get a nice four or five bedroom villa with a, with a good sized pool as well. Um, a good question has actually just come in and this, this is relevant to all of the Agro, but this being one of the, the key spots, is it what's, what are the seasons like there? Is it, uh, they've said the stuff shut over the winter or is it a truly year-round destination? Well, I, th I think due to the, especially due to the golf, um, it sort of extends the season here somewhat. Um, so I would say that there's probably two months. Well, I can I can talk for this area. But there's two months where it, it is it is fairly quiet, which would be December and January. Yeah. Uh, outside of that, everything's reopened up because the golfers are out. Um, at the start of February, which is a big golfing season, February, March time, and it runs through all the way till November. So, um, so yeah, I'd say you've pretty much got a 10-month 10, 10 season. Yeah, great. Um, and that obviously makes it a very um, good area for rentals with good occupancy. Um, and you mentioned the golf, and I know it's one of the attractions is you've got good rentals for people coming out to play golf in the spring and autumn. Yeah, absolutely. So you're not, you're not sort of stuck to your... Um, sort of your six weeks summer holidays and your easters it does you do that it does extend on that because you do get your groups of golfers out or, or obviously the couples as well who are also golfing yeah great thanks very much chris um 
we could talk about these areas, you know, for hours each, but we're going to have to move along because um, we've got an hour. Uh, just quickly, a question from Ken about the prices we're quoting. They are all in euros, not in sterling, um, just so you know. Um, and now just heading west of Villamora, we get to um, the, the lively family resort of Abu Farah. Um, I know, Angela, you do a lot of, uh, you have a lot of interest in clients buying in that area. Do you want to just tell us about the Abu Farah area? Next, please. Uh, yeah. So Abu Farah is great for families uh, on holiday, uh, good for rentals, and it's nice. There's a nice coastline to the, the west of the actual Albufeira old town that's got um, really beautiful, stunning beaches. Um, and it's a bit quieter than it actually is in town. So a lot of people do tend to go around those areas. Also got a marina in Albufeira, so uh, nice to drink and restaurants there um, on the coast. But we've also got surrounding it, there's lots and lots of places. I actually live 20, about 15 minutes 20 minutes inland from Albufeira. So I live in a place near Tunes um, called Farrell. And so there's a lot of countryside around there and quite a few hills as well, so you can get views and, and things. Um, but it is, it's a, a very um, a very popular, I think it's probably the, the main area that people used to come to years ago. That was the, like the main destination. Um, and now it's spread out to lots of little places around it um, that offer a, nice restaurants uh, there's a lot to do we've got um zoo marines not far away in uh gear um gear is known for chicken puri puri and so a lot of people go there that's a, a town just off the coast it's inland a little bit um and but it's quite a famous little village so yeah there's a there's a lot there's um Padern as well Padern's about 10 minutes inland from albufeira and they have a lot of carnivals and festivals so it's known for it. it's like a really sleepy little town that seems really quiet and and then suddenly there's a party and the whole town comes alive and the whole family jet all the generations are there from the the little ones to great grandmothers and things like that so it, it's a it's a nice place for um both living holiday rentals um it is a, it's a good area there's a lot going on and uh what is the big, I mean, Albu Fair is all about the beach, is it? I mean, it's got beaches um, in the main town and around it. Yeah, it's got an old town and a new town. Um, so the old town's like Fisherman's Beach. Um, and then the, the new town's like Predator. And they're both really nice big beaches. It, it tends that the new town is where the younger people go, I would say. It's a, a lot livelier and most people don't come out until 10 o'clock in the evening. It's, a, it's known for the, the strip. Uh, the bars and restaurants, uh, and that's and then the families tend to go to the old town, which is more, more quaint um, and quite a bit quieter than it is on the in the new town. But Ferreras as well, Ferreras is about ten minutes uh, inland from Albufeira, and that's where the, actually Albufeira train station is. So that's where you would get the trains everywhere, and that's a lovely little town. It's um, very Portuguese, but it, it's got a lot going on and. There's new bars popping up there all the time, and it's quite a lively place to go to. It's like all round a roundabout and uh, lots and lots of bars and restaurants and things like that. Okay. Uh, and what are we talking about transfer times to Abu Farah from the airport? About three quarters of an hour. Very similar to the way, yeah. It's about three quarters of an hour, I would say. Okay. Um, and most people, what, what do most people opt for when they're buying in Abu Farah? Like, is it a mixture of villas and apartments? Just give us an idea and a bit and typical prices as well. What do people spend in Abu Farah? Yeah, I mean you can spend from um, I mean a one bedroom nice apartment you can get real cloud close to town for for about between one hundred seventy to two hundred thousand. You would be able to pick that up, um, but then there would be uh, obviously more expensive ones going inland to house. You can get a villa. I would say around. The 350, 400, depending how far inland you go, uh, with a swimming pool, um, a nice villa. Uh, you get more land as well if you go inland, so you will get more. But down near the coast to get a villa, you'd, you'd probably be talking about um, five to six hundred thousand for a three bedroom villa with a pool. Um, wow. It's not a right expensive area, but it's very popular, so obviously it, it, the prices do go up. 
Uh, and do, do many people buy there and then um, sort of head off towards the Golden Triangle to, to use the golf courses or do they tend to sort of stick around Abu Fera? Is it, is it a, a more affordable way of getting a foot, you know, foothold in, in that, close to that, um, that area? Yeah, um, I mean, obviously, the, all of the Algarve's only 120 kilometres long, so um, it's easy to visit anywhere when you're there. So, you know, you can have a place somewhere and, and still um, take advantage of all the other things as well. And like I said, the train goes practically all the way along, so you, you can get on train, it's very, it's, it doesn't cost a lot, and it's really easy, it, it, it's a long time. Um, so it's... It's quite accessible in that sense uh, to, all, to all the areas. Yeah. And that's, uh, we've got Angela Alexander asked which airport. It's, it's um, Faro Airport, isn't it? It's yeah, everywhere Faro on airport. the Algarve, really. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, Faro is the one to use, yeah. Uh, and another question about Abu Faro um, from Paul Carpenter. He asked about the rental season for a holiday let. Um, in the old town, he said, what, what sort of occupancies levels can you expect? You're talking um, definitely like from May through to October, you've got your families, um, easy to rent out through those months up until October. October, um, you start to get your golfers out, so you will get golfers in that area. There is, you know, fairly close by golf courses and things. Um, the winter is, is quieter, the winter is much quieter, um, but we, we get a lot of people come over that are retired that might spend two or three months renting through the winter just to get away from the cold, especially the Scandinavians. Um, it's a mixture of uh, all different nationalities it, that come over and rent for the you know holiday rents. Um, and anywhere on, on the Algarve is good for, for renting out, more or less. Um, that's an old Albufera, yeah, but it is a, a very, you'll get top whack in the, in the summer months. You'll get really good rent uh, prices then. Um, and then obviously you have to reduce them on the outskirts. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Angela. Now, moving further west still, we're getting into, would you call this the central Algarve now? Or we, yeah, we're in the central Algarve still. Uh, and Nuno. Um, yes. Can you hi there? Can you tell us about Colwero, which is another another popular area, um, and just talk us through that area? Maybe go as far as Silres in inland, because I know people do buy up there as well. Um, yeah, Colwero is a, a little German village. Um, it's just based about sixty-five kilometers away from Faro Airport. Um, it offers it offers a variety. It's not just for families. There's a lot of uh, expats and foreigners living there all year round. So all year round, you've got something happening within Curvoiro. Um, lot in 2018, Praia do Curvoiro actually won an award, uh, best European beach. Um, so it's very well maintained. There's a lot, of, loads of bars and restaurants, affordable bars and restaurants. Uh, within the town of Curvoiro, you can find two renowned golf courses, which is Valde Pinta and Gramash. The rates to play there, you're looking at an average of about 80 to 95 euros per person with a buggy included. You have your sunset fees, which are a lot cheaper. Property there, if you're looking at an apartment, could run from about 150,000 depending on new build or if it's built. For villas as well, I would say starting comfortably at about 350 going up as well. It's more, it's more hilly, it's not as flat, but you've got areas like Benagil, uh, Dolferias, uh, Praia da Boneca, which all areas that cover within the Cavuera town, but uh, are affordable. When, when talking about Cavuero, is it something that people tend to look for rental? Yes, it's something that offers all year rental. Um, most people say high seasons of May, but no, I would say you're looking at rental season, average price to start of May, your high season being June, July, August. Now pushing forward into September and October because the weather is aligned for that as well. It's not childhood and makers with children, but it's more the people that are, are retired and want to come, it's more quiet. But again, they'll find that all the restaurants, all the bars, everything's functioning as if it would be working in high season as well. Um, if you're a family with kids and you come to Curvoiro, on the back of Curvoiro, we've got a little Portuguese town called Lagoa. Just on the side of that, you have uh, an amusement park, which is Light and Splash. It's a water park that caters for children as well. Um, you could travel to Lagos and go to Zoot Lagos, which is about a 25-minute drive. 
one thing we need to realize is that the Algarve is pretty small. So it's easy to commute back and forth. And all of these water parks, like Angela mentioned, Zoo Marine, uh, Slide and Splash, Zoo Dlagush, they all have their own transport. So if whatever town you land up in, you could easily buy a ticket. And there's actually the, the, the amusement parks have their own transport getting you to these places. So if we had to break away from the way when people said to me, look, no, no, we're not looking for a rental property. We'd like to get more for our money. Then you would probably go back on the A22, what we call inland. You'll yeah. find property. Silge. Silge is a historical uh, little city. It's placed high in the hill there. It goes as back as 1000 BC. Um, in September, they actually closed down the town and they, they have a festival which is called uh, Silge Medieval Festival where you pay like a euro and the whole town dresses up as queen, kings and queens and they offer that type of entertainment. But again, the Alawagov offers that in high season rental as well. You'll have the sardine festival happening in Portimao. You'll have the seafood festival happening in La Lame. So they want tourism to come out to the Algarve. So they tend to cover all the areas as well. The thing about going inland is you're going to find Port Silvish. You've got areas like Nara, Masinj, where the properties are more Portuguese, typical Portuguese, but they offer you bigger plots of land, which offer for different types of things, whether you want to grow your own local produce, oranges, fruit, vegetable. It's something you can do there as well. But you get a lot more money there as well. Then we've got another area, which is if you go into Portimao, Portimao, the name says it all. It's uh, a town where it's historical as well. It's got its port. It's where they were known for fishing and shipbuilding. But slowly along the years, because it's one of the oldest towns like Faru, what's become of it is you've got beaches along the marina and Prada Rocha and going into Alvo, which has made it also a, a, an area to cater for tourism. More and more people tend to look for those areas. Portu Portimao is more Portuguese based. You'll find a lot of cheaper apartments and property there as well, but it's also older. If you wanted something like the Golden Triangle within the Portimao area, you'd be looking at Curvoiro and you'd be looking at a little town which is similar to Curvoiro, but it's again not as healy as Curvoiro, which is Alvo. Alvo also offers you golf courses, offers you stuff for family and kids to do. Uh, talking about golf courses in Alvo, you're looking at areas like Penina. Uh, Gramashu, uh, not Gramashu, sorry, Alto Golf, which used to have the longest par five in Europe. So it's also lovely golf courses. These all tend to be part of a group which is called Pashtana. So if you buy into a membership with them and if you had to become a member, for example, the cheapest membership you could get would probably be with the Silge Golf Course, which is on the back of that as well. But it allows you gr cheaper green fees for all of these golf courses. So there's a lot to do. I know there's a lot of information to try and give on these webinars, but it's something you can always email us and we can put this on black and white for you guys. Hey, great. Um, just looking at Silves, or how you What's the sort of distance in terms of driving from, from there to the coast? How long? Well, was if, you, if you were in the city center of uh, Silch, you'd probably be looking by car at about a 10 to 12 minute drive. Okay, so it's not, not so far then, yeah. Um, no, no. If, and in sorry. this area around Carvuela, I'm, I'm assuming that this is. Um, this is a sort of residential developments, low rise villas, townhouses down here. Um, what sort yep. of prices are we looking at for, what are people spending down here for a, for well, a villa? Which, a, a villa, I would say a, a decent villa that's ready to go, fully furnished, you're probably looking at about 350,000 euro upwards, standalone. What plays a big difference in price is your size of plot and how close you are to the ocean. If you have a sea view, you tend to pay a lot more for that as well. But the villas itself, as in subject to quality and build, they're more or less the, the same. What you're paying in difference in price is the proximity to the ocean. Right. So if you wanted something where you could walk to the to the ocean in, in 15 minutes, say, um, what are we looking at? I would say, for example, I have a villa which is just on the top of Sol Fadish, which is literally 900 from the ocean and that villa you could get just under 480,000 euros and we're talking okay. we're talking about a four bedroom villa with with pool garage you know, that type of stuff yeah um and uh transfer time from the airport here to Cardwell if, if you do a transfer you're looking just over an hour if you had to have a rental car your own vehicle you're looking at about 50 minute drive about 50 but that's minutes. quite front of of Kervoida town if you had to drive into Lagoa you're probably looking at about 45 minutes. Okay. Um, 
And, and why would someone buy in this area and not, for example, Abu Feda? I mean, what's what makes people come further west to Carvalho? Um, Again, like I say, it's always subject to taste. Uh, I think yeah. every town along the Gulf and along the coastline offers some indifference. Um, Laguj has all year round uh, for his, again, Laguj is a place more and up and coming since they built the A22 because you can get a lot quicker than traveling on the E and one too far, which used to make it difficult uh, in high season. But now it's, it's a sought out place because it offers, you know, your historical uh, castle, your fort, your, your own marina, walking distance to beaches, lovely restaurants, typical. Come in 12 or same thing again, not as big, but it's a little fisherman village. Flat, uh, lovely coast that offers golf courses. Food is cheap and affordable. Kirvueiro, it's not the same as Alvor, yet it's still a fisherman village. It's where a lot of foreigners tend to reside as well. It's a bit more hilly, so it may be difficult for people who have problems in war. Um, but again, every town has something different and unique to it. Yeah. Again, it's also you might come out to Elgarve and say, no, no, could have waited, it's not for me, but I've fallen in love with Alvor. But this is why we always say, get to know the, the areas. The Elgarve is something that you can travel from east to west, and within three days, you've traveled most of the iconic scenery points and get to know a lot about the town. So it's not something like, say, oh, we'd have to spend months trying to learn about the Elgarve. No, within a couple of days, you'd understand the perfect location. And once knowing the location, then probably I would recommend start looking for the property because, again, every single property has its unique tradition to it, but you may fall in love with something in an area and not find the same one in another area. So location is definitely a key point. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. I'm conscious of the time. Um, great. And so we move into the last section now, which is um, Lagos, I think that's how you say it. Uh, and we're gonna go over to, to Chris now. Um, and He's going to talk us through Lagos. Hi, Chris. And anywhere west of Lagos as well, because don't forget there's we've got Praia de Luz um, and then these places, Sagres. Um, so, hi, Chris. Hi, hi, there. hi there, Richard. Well, Nunu did a, quite a good little job there on Lagos already for me. Um, Lagos is, is a lovely historic city, and unusually, it has a marina which is further inland than the town. So any movements of boats in or out of the marina come past the town. So that's lovely. The town sits on the river. Yeah. Um, and that's that's very unusual. We are at the end of the railway line. So if someone comes or from Lisbon or from far of our train, that's that's as far as they can go. So we get we do get a lot of people coming in by train. Um, our our coastline from Lagos westwards is in many ways very Cornish, big uh, cliffs into beaches at the bottom, looking then into beautiful clear water. East of Lagos, we have a, a long, long beach, five kilometers long, stretching to, to the Alvor River. And that's a glorious beach in the summer. Um, you can see what's... There it is. That's it there, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and that's, wow. that's a lovely beach. Uh, there's a, a lovely golf course overlooking that called Palmaris has been there for it's only 50 years, I think. Um, and that's stunning views over both the bay and, and the estuary there, which, which is tidal. And in the estuary, you were talking about what people can do. There's all sorts of sailing activities go on in there. Um, people kite surf, people sail in there and, and spend the day there. I was, I was there several times in the summer with friends and speedboats. We go up into Alvor from Lagos, we go up into Alvor, have lunch there, um, a few bottles of wine and then head back out again. So there's there's lots to do there in the summer. In the winter, it tends to be slightly different. We get big groups often coming for things like cycling, walking, bird watching is very popular in October time in Sargosh, right on the corner there where when the birds are migrating further south. Um, but just going back to Lagos and, and working our way eastwards there, um, the next sort of area you have is, is Praia de Luge. Um, where are we? That's it there. Yeah, but it runs right down to the beach, to the water there. And yeah. that's, that's again, an old historic fishing village, um, which is well known for, for tourism. 
Um, the, a lot of low rise was built there, so it's preserved a lot of its uh, original character, which is great. Everywhere you can walk is, is close to the beach. Um, there's a lot, there's a couple, two or three restaurants on the beach. You can, again, stuff on the beach as well. Golf courses nearby. The, the rental season there and, and in Lagos tend to be about eight months, nine months. Things do close down um, in December and January. They are, they are slower months. Everything is open seven days a week during the, the rest of the year. All the staff need time off and so on. So things tend to get much quieter in, in Christmas, over the Christmas period. And that's quite nice, actually. It gives a totally sort of different aspect to it. Yeah. Um, then again, further, further. Can I just ask, do people, yep. do people tend to buy in, in Lagos itself or are they buying sort of around or five minutes? A, around, a, Lagos itself is still a very Portuguese, the center is still very Portuguese. So you have a lot of people who are second and third or fourth generation owners, um, often who are Lisbon or Northern based, they come down, they use it for themselves primarily in the summer and then they go away again. And for example, this year, with all the problems we've had, those people have been the savior of, local, of the local um, hospitality business, because without them, there would be no one there. So it's, we're much to be grateful to them for that. Yeah. Largish with, its, with all its history, as the Portuguese do love it, as, as do the foreigners. The center of Largish has lots of bars and restaurants. So at night, it's very busy. It's safe. You can walk everywhere, and so it's it's great for that. Okay, uh, and Praia de Luz, I'm guessing people want to be near the beach there, do they? Yes, do they? yeah. That's that's more more beachy. Again, it's a family resort. Um, it's been attracting the Brits there since since the early '60s. They they love it. Everyone speaks English, so people feel comfortable. There's two or three super good supermarkets aimed at the foreign market, they know what they like, the Marmite and, and everything else, um, and so on. So it, it works very well for the, for the Brits. We're beginning now to diversify, we're getting French and Scandinavians as well there. So that, that helps extend the season and it, it helps maintain the property prices so that there isn't the, the traditional thing that happens in Spain of ups and downs in the values of properties yeah. um, over time. Okay, great. And, and then I'm just going to quickly ask, we've had a question yeah. saying, are you going to cover Al, Jaz Al Jazeera? Yes, uh, we'll come to that in a minute. We'll talk about that, but just yeah. what is there? And then you've got Regao, which is a little very sort of Cornish style, um, even smaller than Cavuera in that everything runs down to the beach. It's very steep. Um, it's just a one-way system in and out because um, the, the roads are so narrow. It's got a great beach bar there um, where they make a very good pims for, for who likes. Um, and it's sort of, again, people tend to go back generation after generation. So that's, that's lovely as well. Yeah. The waves are getting a bit bigger there because it's getting closer to the corner. Um, there's activities on the beach, near golf course nearby, a park foresta, golf St. Antonio's it's called now. So again, there's things for people to do and to rent and so on, and a good selection of bars and restaurants as well. And then as you come further, further west again, uh, you're getting s small beaches in and amongst the cliffs with odd beach bars and so on. For, as west of Brugau is a national park and the national park extends to the corner and then halfway up to Lisbon. So yeah. all that area south of the, of the, of the main 125, which is the coast road there, is National Park. Nothing can be built outside the towns and the villages. At Sagrish itself, right there on the corner, very famous um, for, for the discoveries of, of Africa, of South America. Henry yeah. the Navigator had his, his sailing school there. So someone who likes that sort of thing, there's plenty there to go and see and enjoy and you know, to take that on board. So that's, it's very windy, obviously there. There's, there's not much between there and America, so that's 4,000 miles. But when there's a storm, it is very, very impressive. I've seen those cliffs there, probably 150 meters high, and I've seen water break over the top of them. 
um, when, the, when the storms are really up. It's amazing, impressive. It's, uh, it's worth having a look. Um, can I just ask, well, the beaches here, are they similar? I know at different parts of the Agar claim they've got the best beaches. Um, but what, what are the what sort of characterizes the coastline here compared to say Colwara or Abufera area? Are we getting more cliffs and, and um so west west of Lagos, yes. Into um we have two or three good sized beaches, Praia de Luge and um Porto de Moj are good sized beaches anywhere in the world. Yeah. East of Lagos, you've got Maya Praia, which is a five kilometer long beach, which is a stunning beach. And there are not many places, even in the Algarve, that have a beach of that length. And you then, you have the entrance to the, to the river and then the beach continues uh, to Alvor and so on. And I mean, it is, it is stunning. And if, if you drive into Lagos from Praia de Luge, you come past the, the, the fire station and you see the whole beach out in front of you. And it is absolutely stunning. So west, west of Lagos tend to be, say, more so Cornish, on the whole Cornish-style beaches. Uh, east of Lagos, more open type beaches. Okay. As a general, general thing. As a general rule. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm conscious of the time. Now, we are going to talk about Al Jazeera, which you can see is up heading north, up the coast yeah, there. That's um, it. There. You, you picked a property to show us from there, so perhaps yes, you can indeed. talk about it when we look at that. Yeah. Um, which we're going to do right now. So thank you very much, Chris, Chris, Angela and Nuno. Um, each of uh, the panellists have picked us uh, a property as well, which they're going to showcase. Um, and and they're hopefully they're typical of what is available at the moment. Um, so I'm just going to share those with you. And then we'll start Richard, with sorry, can, can I go last? Because I've just got someone ringing the doorbell, the delivery. Yeah, no, that's yep. fine. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I hope it's good. <laughs> okay, right. Um, just bear me where I bring up the properties. Okay, that's so just as a quick, um, quick guide. Uh, Chris, he's picking up his shopping, is going to talk about a villa in Al Jazeera, which is up here. Um, uh, so we're going to go, and then the second property is in Portimao, uh, which is uh, Angela's going to talk about. Nuno's picked one in Colwero, yeah, and then back into the Golden Triangle. Chris again is going to talk about a, a villa in Quinta, Quinta Lago. So we'll go straight to Angela. Uh, here you go, Angela. Hi there. Hi. You're still there? Yeah. Great. <laughs> Tell us about this villa. Okay, so this villa um, is about just over between 10 and 15 minutes drive to the out to Alvo. Um, it's in the countryside. Uh, it's got, um, it's not on its own, it's got uh, neighbours around it, but it's very private. Yeah. And yeah. you get a lot for your money here because this house is like, when you look at it, you see one floor, but it actually goes down. So it goes down into the basement, uh, but it has uh, natural light from it. So it's, it's got um, a lot going on in the house when you get in it, you'd be surprised. So the, when you look at the bar here in the top uh, left-hand corner, that's... That's uh, the basement, is it? Yeah, that's downstairs. So it, it's got a lot of space, a lot of room. Um, it, it hasn't got a, a... It's got a little pond in the garden, but it will, it's got enough room for a swimming pool. So you yeah. would value as well onto the house by having a swimming pool. Um, but I would say it, it's the amount of house that you get for the money. It's been recently reduced um, and it's only on at 375 now. So that's what you typically can, can find if you, you look hard um, when you're away from the coast. Got a lovely roof terrace. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's classed as a three bedroomed house, but it's actually got six uh, rooms in there that can be bedrooms. Yeah. Okay. So, Thank you very much. That's one option. We'll come back to you, Chris, now, if that's all right. All right. Yep. Sorry, the DHL have beat. <laughs> that's all right. Right. Uh, Tell this us about is, this place. This is in Val d'Italia, which is five minutes drive from Al Jazeera, up on the cliff tops. Um, it's got sea views from the, from the top floor. The house has been refurbed recently. It's in great condition. 
It's got a good sized plot, pool, and something which many houses in the Algarve do not have, it has central heating. So that, that in, in, especially in the winter, it doesn't get cold, it gets damp. And therefore, some sort of heating source is, is, is really quite useful in the winter. Four bedrooms, two of them are upstairs, both en suite upstairs, in effect, two master bedrooms, with two downstairs. Um, it's, it's in this, this area called Baldatelia, which is a sort of residential area, literally five minutes from, from Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera has supermarkets, shops, restaurants, and so on, as does Baldatelia. You've got a good sized plot, it's about a thousand square meters. So you, you're getting you know, good value for money there. Um, yeah. That, that doesn't doesn't need any work. It's it's ready to move in with with a sea view from the first floor. Uh, and the area Al Jazeera. So we had a question about that area. What is what yep. is the attraction of it? Why do people buy there as opposed to further south? It's it's based on the west coast. You've got absolutely stunning scenery up there. It's part of the national park land. You've got very dramatic coastline. People, especially if they're surfers and so on, love love that area because that's where you get the big waves. The beaches, even in the summer, are not busy. In the winter, they're empty. Um, yeah. A friend of mine was sent me a photograph this morning. On the he was on the on the beach there with his dog. Absolutely no one there at nine o'clock this morning. So that's the attraction. It's it's much quieter. Um, you get much more value for your money. You know. Yeah. For, for that sort of price in the Lagerish, probably the Luge area, you'd be talking a sort of three bedroom terrace cottage type property. Right. So that's, that's, that's the difference in value. And, and is it feasible to fly into um, uh, Lisbon for, for this part? No, it, it's, it's still, still Faro and you're probably talking about an hour, 20 minutes or so. It's about an hour to Lagerish on the motorway, maybe a bit, a bit less. And then it's about another 20 minutes to, to Valdatelia. Okay. Right. So 20 minutes from, from the south coast, five minutes from the west coast. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, we've done that one. Uh, Nuno. Yes. Hello, uh, Nuno. Hi. Okay, so basically this property, the reason I chose, um, we're talking about a property that gives you of an understanding of what you're getting for price in Curvoidu. It's a standalone villa. Um, it's placed on a just under a thousand square meter plot, has a heated pool, while maintaining a mature garden as well. Uh, as you come into the villa, it leads on to, on your left hand side, a dining room, lounge, uh, heated fireplace that leads to both the dining room and the lounge and seating area. It, the dining room leads into the kitchen, which is a good sized kitchen with a lot of storage, which leads back onto the garden. So in the Algarve, you've got a lot of outdoor living. So it's good to have a kitchen that links to your, to your backyard and your pool because you're going to be commuting back and forth with your grills and your barbecues. Um, on the ground floor, you'll find two bedrooms with a, a bathroom and a storage room. The whole house offers air conditioning. Air conditioning in the Algarve works with, with, uh, for heating and cooling. And that's that the property has besides the aircons, it has wall radiators for heating in winter. As you lead up onto the first floor, you'll find two bedrooms big rooms in big size. Both of them have stunning panoramic sea views from the, the top floor. Uh, you've got a little courtyard and seating area on the outside of both bedrooms, which leads onto a roof terrace. On the roof terrace, you could basically see as far as Lagos, right through towards Faro Island. And on the back, you've got a lovely uh, view of the country and marshy hills. So this property is listed at 540,000 euros, but it comes furnished. So that's a key point as well. The furniture in there is sold and it's ready to go. Property like this in Curvoiro, it's within 800 meters to the beach. When walking out of it, it actually leads onto the road, which actually walks past the market. We can buy your local produce from the local vendors there, which goes straight onto the bars of the road. So you're far enough to be away from the noise that's happening in summer, but you can easily walk to it. Um, and another key feature as well on this on this villa is the rental potential. You're looking at a villa like this would generate you anything from 400 to 600 euros a day for, for a villa like this, which is a good rental income as well. Great, thank you very much. Yeah, lovely skies there as well. Um, you mentioned Monchique just then. I'm just asking this because Paul Carpenter has asked about Monchique. He said, is yes. it a good village for a holiday let? It's slightly inland, isn't it, Monchique? Is that right? Yes. <coughs> 
if we if, if we look at this photo that I have you on the villa on the roof terrace on the top left hand corner, Monchique's just on the back, the views on the back of that. Monchique um, is up in the hills. You're talking that if you drove away from Portimão to Monchique, within 15 minutes you're on the top. From the top, you can actually see the Al Algarve. You can actually see the ocean at the bottom. The thing about Monchique is that you, you you're going away from the ocean, but you're still within distance, driving distance to it. What you tend to find up there is a lot cheaper properties as well. A lot of Portuguese. Uh, we have a, a special drink, which is what you guys would call a fire water, but in Portuguese it's known as madroin. Uh, that's produced from the trees up there. The ladies who don't like it and find it really strong, they have a, a counter version, which they add honey to it, and it's called mlaza. But yes, properties up there are really good and for affordable as well. And again, you're within about 20 minute drive back down into Portimao and I'd say 25, 30 minute drive to the ocean. Great. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, and our final property, um, we're now heading into the Golden Triangle. Uh, and Chris, you're going to talk to us about a four bedroom villa in Kinta. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just give you a bit of an idea on the location first. Um, it's in the heart of Kinta. In fact, it's actually um, it's a development called In Costa de Lago, uh, which is off Earth and Center Avenue, uh, which is probably one of the most prestigious roads in Kinta. Um, where it's actually situated, I spoke a bit before about the lake in Quinta and a couple of restaurants being um, Casa de Lago, um, the Shack, which is now very popular down there for sort of snacks and cocktails and stuff like that. Um, they're all within five, six minutes walk of this particular villa. Um, just from the Shack and those areas that I was talking about down by the lake, um, there's plenty of walkways or, or or cycle paths now, um, which you can actually, on foot, um, if you're having a walk, you can actually walk to Faro Island from there. It takes you roughly about an hour, maybe 15 minutes on a, on a, on a bike. Um, so it's, uh, it's well located. Um, I picked the actual villa um, down to the fact, I think one, I think it's actually under market value um, currently, and it sits on a double plot. Um, so it has a little bit more potential as well, depending on how you wanted to work it. Um, the villa is a, is, a, is a four bedroom villa. You have three, three bedrooms, um, all en suite on the ground floor, um, which all access the, the pool area. Um, then you have a middle level, which is actually currently um, um, used as, a, as an office, but could be a fifth bedroom if, uh, if it was needed. And then you have um, on the top level, which where you're pointing at right now, you have the, the master suite. Um, and as you can see, just to the right, um, there's, a, there's a large terrace as well there, which is private terrace straight off the, off the, master, off the master suite. Um, now, where that, where that photo is taken from and behind us there is, is actually the additional plot. Um, so um, there's a couple of options. Obviously, you can keep, the, keep it as it is, so you have plenty of space around you. Um, or you have the option to maybe build a, um, a, a granny flat or, or a guest cottage, or, or you could divide the plots into two and actually build um, another villa, which would probably give you um, sort of the most profit from the purchase. Great. Thanks very much. Um, there we go. Okay, and there's all four of them together. Um, We've got four minutes left, so we've had a few questions come in. Um, one that's been asked a few times is, um, has COVID and the travel restrictions and, and everything else that's coming with it, has it, do you think it's affecting prices or what is it, is there effect on the market, if any? Um, Chris, Chris Garvey, have you seen, have you seen any yes. effect? Yes, initially, when we reopened in June, to my honest surprise, we did very well, and we did very well until beginning of September when it was dropped down. So yeah. the demand got pent up, a bit like actually in the UK. It yeah. hasn't affected the prices. People feel Portugal secure. So many vendors were feeling there should be a premium for, for Portugal rather than a, a knock price, knock on the price. Um, obviously, we're now moving into a, a different situation again, so it's, it's a bit early to tell. But certainly, yeah. we've done very well, so I, I can't complain, is, is my view on that. 
Good. Well, that's good to hear. Uh, Angela, how have you found it? Yeah, exactly. It's um, it's, uh, it, it busier than we thought it would be. And we've just changed direction as well, like doing a lot of webinars and things. So we're doing live webinars with individual clients in yeah. properties. And that's helping so they get to see it, especially if it's an investment property, because it's not like having to, if you're relocating, you do always want to come and see more of it. But yeah. it is working well. Um, but it has gone quieter this month. We have felt it compared to last month. Uh, yeah. I think that's a bit unsure. People are unsure what's going to happen next. And I think um, until we know whether people are going to go into lockdown and things like that, it might just hold off for a little bit. But even we talk, I mean, we do a rental company as well. Um, and I will say it's just been different people. So we didn't expect to be as busy as we were. <clears throat> and uh, we were quite shocked actually. But it's like a lot of the Portuguese stayed in Portugal uh, for the holidays and a lot of the Spanish came and stuff like that. So yeah, it's surprised how, how well it has been. Okay, that's good to hear. Uh, question for, for you, Nuno. If that's all right. Um, uh, this person's anonymous. They've asked, what's the normal starting offer? Say, if you're making an offer on a property, what percentage below asking price is sort of acceptable? Is is the done thing? Um, I'm guessing you'll know you'll know the vendor and, and what sort of the situation is. It might not be that any is suggested. <laughs> Again, I think every deal is is one on its own. But to be quite honest, what you tend to find there's a bit of room for negotiation, depending on what type of vendor. Um, what we tend to find, and again, it's like I say, everyone to its own. But what you tend to find is room between five and ten percent. Um, some might include the fixtures and fittings. Some might say, look, we're we're prepared to paint and refurbish certain things that the clients may want to change. But I'd I'd say on a norm. I would say it's not very far off the asking price, but you tend to get some room for negotiation. Again, it's always in our interest to try and negotiate to the best of the clients that's trying to pursue it. But again, the vendors itself, they, when we tend to do a listing or when we tend to market a property, we've already given them a, a feel for what the asking price should be on the market. So at the moment, you're not finding prices that are really, really high. They're not overpriced. So they're within the asking price. So if they're really small room, the small budget that you could consider you could take off in there yeah so what you're saying that the the climate at the moment isn't isn't one that, where you're going to get a silly offer accepted or even near it no people who yeah no. they want as close to the asking price as possible um, that's the well, still the owners tend, still tend to find that even though we're bringing them an offer there's always other people looking to buy the property it's not like saying look this has been the first offer we've had in months. No, there's constantly people looking, constantly buying. The thing that's affected most of sales is the fact that people can't come out as easily to view the properties. But as Angela said, we've taken a different toll to it. We're doing virtual tours. We're showing them through photos. We go in there live and speaking to clients on the ground and showing them the house. So it's not that sales have fallen completely away. They still exist. It's just we're doing it a different way now. Sure. Okay. Thanks very much. We are right on the hour now, but I just want to squeeze in one final question. Um, and I'll ask you, Chris Garvey, if that's all right. It's from Anne and Christian. Um, and they want somewhere, they want hills, they want few tourists, and they want sea views. Sounds idyllic. Where, can you throw, throw a few names, a few villages or towns? Um, I'm thinking maybe perhaps that Western corner you were talking about just now. Yeah, I would say sort of, west of Brugau and north up towards Al Jazeera, or even inland to the Sea of to Santa Barbara, the Nez area, that, as, as I think was Nuna saying earlier, that people need to go and have a look and see the areas they like. Yeah. You know, each, each area is unique in its own way. If you want to have access, easy access to, to the beaches, and to, to big impressive cliffs and so on, you need to go west. Yeah. If on the other hand, you want 20 golf courses to pick from, you've got to be more central. So budget comes into it, your interests and so on. You need to go and have a look. But Al Jazeera would, would certainly meet most of those criteria. Well, that's as good a place uh, to start as any. Thank you very much. Uh, we have gone over time now. So 
uh, first of all, thank you very much, um, everyone, for listening, and, and hopefully it's been useful. Don't forget, we've done other sessions previous to this one about the process involved with buying in Portugal, the legal side, um, budgeting, all that sort of thing. So uh, you can get those downloaded off the website, Placing the Sun Digital. Uh, thank you to our panellists, of course, Chris Good, Angela Worrell, Chris Garvey and Nuno Ferreira. We've given up uh, some of their afternoon out in Portugal to uh, share their knowledge and help you, hopefully. Uh, they are all available to, to contact via the Place of the Sun digital website. Uh, they have um, uh, web pages on there, uh, so you can get uh, in contact with them there or book a Zoom um, session, a Zoom meeting with them there as well. Uh, so all their details are available there. Uh, please contact them direct if you want, if you have any other questions, uh, and hopefully I'm sure they'll, they'll be able to help you. So uh, thank you very much, everybody, and good luck with your property hunting in Portugal. Thank you.